Hey yo, what up guys, it's Dark Lord of Fire, I'm here today to bring to you a brand new video. Alright, so I'm going to be starting a new series as of this video, I'm going to call it Video Game Quickies. Alright, over the past year, I have been, like, cracking down on all the video games in my backlog, uh, and I've just been completing them one after the other after the other. And I've been trying to do it as quickly as possible, hence the quickies part. And I figured I would just sit down and give a simple review of every single game that I've been playing over the past year. So today, the game I have to review is Heavy Rain. Now, I wasn't expecting this game to be exactly how it was. I've been wanting to play this game since it originally came out. Um, and I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to be, but I was surprised with what I found. It was a very film noir type game. Uh, you start off with four main characters. Well, actually, you only have four main characters. It's a very story-driven game. Um, so the four main characters are uh, Scott Shelby, a private eye, uh, Jaden, an FBI agent, Ethan, who is a father who has lost his son to a serial killer, and um, Madison. Uh, a woman who is kind of shrouded at, at, as in mystery at the beginning, so I'm not going to spoil that. But uh, a very interesting game. Um, it plays out as this big mystery of like, where's the origami killer? You know, how is he killing his victims and stuff like that? It's a very fascinating, interesting game, and I was not expecting the film noir style. Uh, it has very little when it comes to gameplay, actually. Um, most of the gameplay is just button prompts. Like, uh, I forget what they used to call it back in the day. I, I, I guess it still has the same name, but uh, like in the old Spider-Man games when you like had a button prompt like, Oh, push A to swing through this tower. Now push B, now push R1, now push L1. It's like a more complex version of that. Um, the buttons will just flash on screen for a few minutes and then you're just supposed to hold the buttons or press the buttons in whatever pattern it wants you to do. And it's amazing to me the different multiple choices that you can have in this game. Like, it's not it's not just, oh, well, one thing happens, so... Like, like in Fable. Like in Fable, if you fuck up somewhere, then it doesn't really matter because of over in some other part of the game, it's still going to play out the exact same way. But that doesn't appear to be the case in this game. Every choice you make actually seems to have a consequence. I've only played through the game once, but that's what it seems to me, and I find that very interesting. So to wrap this all up, this game is actually very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. I really enjoyed this game, and if I had to give it a rating on a scale from 1 to 10, it would be... 6 out of 10. I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. Now, this is just my own personal opinion of what I thought while I was playing through it. Now, that it might be completely different for other people who play this game. I can absolutely see how a lot of other people would think that this is an amazing game, or maybe even one of their favorites. But for me, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Alright, so thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you did not like my video, make sure to give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace.